Nathan Uppo from Deadly TV. I've got Kieran Lander here. We're gonna have Zane Lacey back on Deadly TV. We've got one of the young followers on the tour. Uh, Preston Benign. Campbell here, Deadly Choices Ambassador. Hi everyone, I'm Steve Randolph and I'm a Deadly Choices Ambassador. Hey guys, Tracy Thompson here from Deadly Choices. What's your Deadly Choice? Brushing my teeth. Let's go, boys. Go, go, go. And before we'd actually had Deadly Choices, I think they, were, they had a program which was really a set of PowerPoints that they're delivering at the Murray School and the Youth Detention Centre and maybe Mitchie High. You look you know, through the history of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people, we've always been told what to do, how to do it, where to do it. And people, you know, and there's been people who've had the right intentions along the way, but they're still trying to come from our approach to fix you is this, rather than we'll give you the information, you fix yourself. We built a program built off culture, built off good values and what we perceive as leading by example, not leadership, but leading by example. That was us from the start, so choice was always important for us, for people to make an informed choice based on the education we provide to them. And so Deadly Choices was born Be from there. like me, stay smoke free. Smoking leads to many chronic diseases. Too much sugar in your diet can lead to diabetes. Health checks are deadly, so go and get one from your local Aboriginal health centre. That's been the, the power of Deadly Choices, is that we've kept everything consistent. Everyone that sees the Deadly Choices branding, they know it's all around healthy eating, exercise, not smoking, and just you know general leadership qualities for our communities. It's not so much to tell them to quit smoking or give up, it's more of them to have that knowledge and pass on to others. Maybe to reduce smoking or maybe for younger age group, not to start. Yeah. So we run a daily choices program uh, through school. And that's our main program, the AP program, touching on leadership, uh, the smoke, and away from We had an idea. Um, and at the time, Cassie Daniels, Cassie Powell back then was a student with UQ. And um, she come in and we sat around and had a conversation she had some really good skills to sort of frame our ideas together and structure what we're thinking. And You know, as a baseline, developed the program around leadership and, and what we might see the next generation doing to close the gap and to change the uh, tobacco and, and uh, healthy lifestyle outcomes of community. So Deadly Choices was uh, really successful in, in communicating really important messages in a way that our people are actually gonna, they're gonna connect to and gonna resonate with. So, so you think about the history of tobacco campaigns in Australia, particularly the mainstream campaigns, and even those targeted in our communities, it's all been kind of negative and trying to scare people that hasn't worked. A different outlook on, you know, about, you know, the health and, you know, especially with the smoking, because, you know, blokes that were coming out of them, them sessions, they were, instead of going for it to have that cigarette outside, they were grabbing an apple, so, just little things like that, you know, it's not trying to force it down to them, it's just, just showing that it's, it's out there and, and you know, that, that little education could, could make that difference to their health. And where are you from? A little bit about yourself. Um, my name is Dave Fida and I'm from Torres Strait, Tonga. Yeah. Um, so you say that it brings you fellas together, brings black fellas from around Brisbane together to be in one place and to enjoy them. Yeah, it brings one place like one unit, we get to enjoy each other. Yeah. The feedback we got from the kids was they enjoyed the program, they trusted us, and they were happy to divulge information to us. They're massive wins when you're talking to really disengaged kids. To see them come back every week and to see them learn and engage and enjoy, it just made me um, want to come back and want to learn more and, and do better the next time. And you know, I think early days, I remember I met him for the first time, it was a conversation about a rugby carnival and the sevens thing and Ian always disputes the, whether it was rugby league or rugby union, but it was rugby union. It was a sporting event, I won't get into the rugby league and rugby union. Um, I like both codes, so that's okay. We had a, um, a design that was made up uh, for a rugby league event that didn't go ahead and there was a campaign going at the time called Hero Awards. Um, which was run by Quake, um, which was incentivising Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people to get a health check and they were getting a, a Coles or Woolies voucher for doing it. So we come up with a model of, well, people are asking about these shirts, what do we make them the incentive? And at the time, um, we got these sample jerseys done and they were beauties, they had collars and they were, we were walking along and we used them as uniforms, but we didn't have uniforms at the time. And we'd be walking along the street and it's like, where do you get that shirt from? Uh, nowhere. It's, it's ours, it's a uniform. Well, can I have it? And I said, no, you can't. <laughs> can I pay for it? And I said, no, no, well, I want one. And this was common, it just happened. 
And a really important part there was not just to be able to produce the evidence from census data about how many blackfellas exist in South East Queensland, how many live here, but also to actually give a practical expression and a visibility to those people. And that's what the shirts provided. And so you have maximum energy all day long. Make sure you eat the right kind of sugar. So make the right choice. Make a deadly choice. And let's all tackle chronic disease. So the ambassadors from the start were, were very important. Um, the ability to have, again, the likes of Sam and Preston um, in those first ads, again, just made people want to watch the ad because they liked those people. To see us be able to produce a brand and get a bit of a, and to get a start, to be able to then pull some money to produce some pretty deadly ads, and to then have those ads played on commercial television. Yeah, that was a, that was definitely something that I always kind of think back and, and, um, and not just in terms of history of DC, in terms of history of the 10 years of IU, I think that was a, I think a, a really massive kind of outcome. 1,001, nice Pearl. 1,002, good work there Pearl. 1,003. Ah. Sammy, what's going on bro? What? My nickname's the Pearl. You remember, for way back, I'm the Pearl. Four grand finals. I wasn't even born back then. Yeah, but I'm the Pearl. Have you lost 24 kilos in the last six months by making deadly choices? No. Well, you're not the pearl. From the start, as I mentioned, Steve Renoff um, was pivotal in getting myself and Kieran across um, to this organisation. Um, so he's been there from the very beginning with all the planning and and um, providing advice and, and just also his profile alone. Yeah, and, and Steve has his own unique story and journey and, you know, being a diabetic and diabetes in his family, um, growing up in Cherbourg and being a, an a enormous advocate for Aboriginal people and Tosha Islanders and, and having an elite career. You put a flyer out with a community event advertisement and some people like it and some, you know, not so much. As soon as you put a, a person that has a high profile and good standing in the community on that, um, on that you know, flyer or on that bit of information you, you're sending out to the community, the uptake and the engagement just skyrockets. The Institute and the Deadly Choices program is what I think a groundbreaking program and a very positive story for the ambitious project to close the gap, particularly in Indigenous health outcomes. It's a great partnership between the club and uh, Deadly Choices. Uh, obviously I've seen it at Geelong and how well it can work. So I'm really forward to being a part of um, the whole partnership and um, driving uh, better health standards for Aboriginal people. Deadly Choices and the North Queensland Toyota Cowboys have been working together for many years now. It's a great example of two community-minded organisations working together for a common goal. It's pretty exciting. This is the first um, yeah, rugby union uh, team we've been able to link up with and, and it's red. So it must be exciting to be a part of this um, transition and a bit of history being made uh, you know, with um, the Reds. Yeah, and it's a wonderful partnership um, for a number of reasons. Um, one, obviously the service that it provides to the community and the outcomes that it delivers through uh, health education and, and helping people do, uh, achieve things or uh, address things in their lives that are important to, to their well-being across multiple generations. But You know, so much saturation in our brand. People recognise the brand. People recognise what the brand is about and the values of the brand. Uh, you know, seeing young kids get involved and, and be really excited to have their Deadly Choices shirts, but also to be involved in our events. I think, you know, the community definitely supports what, what we're doing and I think if we continue to build off their support and, and listen to the community and see what the community needs are and, and review and, and uh, deliver as we need to, I think you know we're going to be responding to that need and responding in a way that is beneficial to everybody. We've got to continue to reinforce um, the importance of um, our identity and our collective identity as Indigenous people um, of this country and the importance of that identity, uh, that identity, and that sitting within you to your health and your well-being and your sense of where you connect in the world. We've done a lot of hard work over, you know, ten years seems like a long time, but it's actually a reasonably short time in terms of, you know, behaviour change and and sort of, you know, generational change. That would be deadly to see deadly choices as part of the Australian curriculum.